Hello! Uh, today we're going to do something new on this channel, but hopefully it will become a staple. I am going to chat to you while I have a speed drawing going on at the same time. So the topic for today is I'm going to talk about uh, how I started drawing mer people so much um, and why I base them all off of fish design or real life fish. Okay. Uh, so first off, the drawing we are doing today is a commission I got from one of my patrons. Um, he told me that he wanted a drawing based off of one of... Oh, well, he told me that he really liked the better fish drawing that I had done previously and that he wanted something similar but he wanted a different color scheme. And so that's what I did for him. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. It took 16 and a half hours to do and um, I think I recorded eight hours worth of drawing and compressed that down into a half hour long video. So there are some bits where I just kind of skipped some sections that were very repetitive um, but I think you get the gist of the drawing um, overall. And I also made sure to put one side of the screen is just um, a zoomed out version of the drawing so that you can see what's happening in the whole thing as well as how I actually draw which is usually at like a 87% zoom in. Anyway, so this is a better fish merman and I think I got into drawing mer people um, when I was a kid. I absolutely loved mythological creatures. That was like my entire jam, right? Um, when I was a kid, there were these books that went uh, out that were called I don't actually know what the series was called, but there were these really fancy books, and there was one that was with wizardology and dragonology and egyptianology and i had the dragonology one and it was the bees knees i loved it so much and at some point when i was a kid i got the spiderwick chronicles book and that book had the most beautiful illustrations by um tony de Trilisi, and i was obsessed with those drawings like i would sit and copy those drawings into different sketchbooks because uh, I, tr I wanted to draw like him and I think at one point I was at Bargain Books and I found a book that was mythological creatures around the world and it was just like a small book that each page talked about a different kind of mythological creature and had some references at the back of it. Like it was kind of like a... Um, Wikipedia article, encyclopedia, sort of a description for each creature. But I was, I love this book. I read the entire thing. I redrew all of the drawings in it because each page is like the right hand side was writing on the animal and the left hand side was a image of the animal or person, whatever. Um, so I think those books and the mythological like fantasy movies that I watched as a kid were really formative for me. Um, I think I got into drawing mermaids and specifically mermaids that were based off of real uh, fish or sea mammals was um, when I was in college, I and a few of my friends were really into the anime Free. And the characters in Free each had an animal mascot for them. So Haru had a dolphin, uh, Makoto had an orca, and Rin had a shark. And I did some fan art where I drew these characters as mermen with their animals that were like they, like Haru was a dolphin merman sort of a thing you know and they got 
decent notes on Tumblr and um, less than how good they did on Tumblr, my friends love these drawings and they like asked me to do them in um, as prints so that they could buy the prints of them and you know I, I printed them and my friends bought these prints from me and I was really sweet to them. They definitely encouraged me to carry on making more fan art and do more art like that. So that was kind of how I started drawing more mer people. Um, and then I think at some point, I also, when I was in college, I was really into the aquarium near us. Like I went to the aquarium quite frequently and I was really interested in different kinds of fish at the aquarium. And my comic Until Sunset is about a man who is a merman. And he is based specifically off of a fish called a red Roman fish. And the reason that I was interested in this fish in particular is because it goes through something called sequestential hermaphroditism, which means that all of the fish of the species are born a certain gender. In this case, all of the fish are born female and each school only has one male. And at some point, if that male dies, the like alpha in inverted commas, the alpha fish that is female, the alpha female fish of this group, will will become male and take over the place of the male fish that had passed away. And I thought that was like really cool, like, you know, just animals are so cool. So I decided to, to create a character that had gone through that transformation, um, that their species of merfolk were all born female and some of them sort of transitioned into male um, once they became teenagers. So because I was writing this comic at that point, I got even more into fish than I had been already. And I drew a lot of merma mermaids. I don't know why I said it like that. Um, like the sentence just stopped <laughs> in the middle of it. Um, when I was writing the comic, I drew a lot of mermaids that were based off of different kinds of fish. I did one with a lionfish and a um, emperor angelfish. And they were beautiful. And I mean, those, those drawings were done like 2016, 2017, or maybe even 2018, I don't know. They're still some of the fa my favorite drawings I've ever done. Um, and I sold them at conventions and I'm just, I'm really proud of those drawings. Um, so yeah, I'm, I think as a kid, I was both really into animals and mythology. So it's kind of a chicken and the egg situation where I'm not sure if I was interested in fish, in animals first, or in mythology first. I think I was probably interested in animals first. Um, and the mermaid drawing thing, like I just, it's a lot of fun to, to take a mythological creature and base them off of real life creatures because then, like, there are just so many weird animals in the world. They really are. And saying, okay, this mermaid, um, she has poisonous fingernails because the fish that she is has uh, poisonous darts in them sort of thing. That's that's fun. That's a cool world building thing that you can do. Um, so yeah, in 2018, so I, I started making my comic in 2016 and I think I, I pretty much was doing it like full time from the get go because I started doing it while I was stuck at home because I needed to learn how to drive to carry on being a makeup artist and I just got really into making my comic and the makeup art jobs kind of st slowly started to um, peter out after a while so I just started making my comic full time and I have been lucky in the fact that I 
still to this day live with my parents and they are willing to support me while I um, go on my art journey. At this point I am mostly making enough money to support myself um, but there were a few years where I wasn't making enough money to support myself I was just you know trying to do it <laughs> trying and failing but eventually I started making money um, from my art anyway so I started working on my comic in 2016 and I work from home I've always struggled to make friends with people I've struggled to talk to people online so I think around 2018 I was just like I needed a reason to leave the house more frequently because I was only leaving the house maybe like twice a month to see um, to see friends or to to see friends I guess um, so I decided to apply to be a volunteer at my local aquarium and that was a really good decision for me I had hoped that I would make friends there but it ended up that most of the time when I volunteered I'd be the only volunteer there so I didn't really talk to other people but that was okay because I still had a reason that I had to leave the house like I had to volunteer at least once a month or I would lose my volunteer spot so I would leave the house once a month to go and work at the aquarium talk to people um, learn some new cool things about different animals that were at the aquarium and I really enjoyed that um, I stopped once the pandemic started unfortunately and I hope at one day I will be able to carry on working at the aquarium because I did really enjoy it but um, when I wanted to start volunteering at the aquarium I had to go through a six-week volunteer course so it was four hours every Monday and we would sit in this classroom at the aquarium and they would tell us different stuff about the different animals that we would be interacting with um, they told us about the um, the currents around South Africa um, the different kinds of seaweed the different kinds of invertebrates that we find um, they showed us how to um, what's the word dissect a fish I was I did not participate in that because that's you could either volunteer in front of house which is you interact with other guests you tell them about kelp and you show them stuff under the microscope that sort of thing or you volunteer behind the scenes and then you feed animals and clean out their um, I want to say cages their tanks but I did not want to do that because I have been vegetarian for way too long and I have developed a phobia of meat and I could not dissect a fish if you paid me you'd have to pay me a lot of money to dissect a fish and you would have to pay enough that I can go to therapy afterwards because um, I would need to talk to a therapist about my phobia to be able to do that. So anyway, um, we learned a lot in this course about the different kinds of fish in um, the aquarium. And this is really helpful because my comic is set in South African waters um, and I just really appreciated have, getting to learn all of the stuff about the different kinds of fish that I could actually use in my comic at some point and just having that extra behind the scenes um, information was very helpful um, so yeah I kind of I'm really sad that I don't work at the aquarium anymore that kind of sucks um, the aquarium has taken a lot from a lot of people the aquarium the pandemic has taken a lot of things from a lot of people um, so you know me being sad that I haven't gone to the aquarium in two years is not the worst thing that's happened to anyone in the last two years I know this but um I do really miss going there once a month 
uh, interacting with people, getting a chance to leave the house. So, and getting inspiration. That's, that's something I've been struggling with a lot this year is that I get inspiration by leaving the house, going to places, meeting people, um, seeing things, you know, all that kind of stuff. I used to go on, I would call them art dates, where I would um, just go somewhere by myself. I would go to the art museum and walk around the museum and take photographs, or I would meet up with a friend and we would go to a restaurant and we'd both bring our iPads and draw on our iPads while we had lunch together and those were so helpful in getting me inspired to work more on my on my art and I really struggle if I have to stay home for more than like two weeks at a time to find the inspiration and the wherewithal to be able to keep working you know um at this point I can go maybe a month without going out anywhere and then the art block really sets in so I had really bad art block earlier this year because I just wasn't leaving the house wasn't seeing anyone wasn't getting that like um that artistic brain juice you know that um leaving the house can give you so i'm working on that more now i'm hoping i can get my vaccine soon and then i might actually um have the courage to take the bus again but i'm not sure if i'll be taking the bus anytime soon but um i've been working on finding inspiration in different places and also like my my parents sometimes will will um do weekends away for birthdays which is really helpful in getting me um excited about drawing again when i get home um but yeah let's talk more about fish and mermaids so this is the second better fish mermaid that i have drawn and they're really difficult because they're really detailed fish obviously there's a lot of fins there's a lot of scales but they're really fun to draw because you can have so many different kinds of colors patterns um the fins can be completely different shapes so as much work as goes into this drawing they are really fun to work on and um I was really appreciative of the opportunity to do this commission for someone because like I said I've had art block this year and I've just been really struggling with finding the inspiration and the time to get any illustrations done this year. I've, I've luckily been able to be pretty consistent with getting my comic pages done this year. Um, I'm not saying I've got a lot of pages done or been very fast about it, but I at least have stuck to getting two pages done a week. I get one page done for the main comic and one page done for the Patreon exclusive comic um, every single week for the most part. And I'm really glad that I've been able to do that, but I've been really struggling with the fact that I haven't gotten many illustrations done. And that really sucks because I love doing illustrations and I love doing big detailed things like this or something that has a big detailed background or um, things that have like lots of plants in it, you know, like clutter. I love cluttered art and just have not had the wherewithal lately to be able to do that kind of art, which is such a shame unless someone commissions me. But then I don't want to actually advertise that I'm doing commissions because I don't really have the time to take new commissions and it's just a vicious cycle. Um, but if someone messages me and says, hi, are you currently doing commissions? I will just be like, yeah, what are you, what are you interested in? And then if they're interested in something that's actually like, um, if they want something from me that I'm actually excited at the prospect of drawing, then I will totally say yes I can do this for you it might take a few months because I think this drawing um, it ended up taking two or three months 
because uh, I just had to find the time to work on it, you know. That's always a struggle. Finding time for things. I don't know. I'm one of those people who, like, time gets away from me very, very quickly. I will just be drawing something and then suddenly two months have gone by and I'll be like all I did these two months was draw and sleep where how was that two months how really so um <laughs> I don't know I'm, I'm really glad that I finished this and that the, the commissioner seemed really happy with it so I'm always grateful for that I'm really grateful for people who commissioned me for these mermaid or merman sort of drawings because I really enjoy doing them um I just yeah like I said very difficult to find time for them something I really love is doing mermaid every year but it's been a long time since I've actually been able to do like mm, all 31 days of mermaid this year I tried really hard to do that and I did them in traditional art and they just like they they got like 20 likes on twitter max and if you spend hours on a drawing and only 10 people interact with that drawing you can't sustainably carry on um with a project like that um for very long so something like inktober my cheat for it is that i start in um, September really like two weeks before October starts and that way I've got like half of the drawings done before I ever actually start showing people them because as soon as I start showing people drawings and no one is interested that's when my my creativity dies if I am working on a drawing and I'm thinking the whole time oh people are really going to love this I can't wait to share this with people and then I share it and no one is interested then like at least I finished them already, you know, I finished the drawings already. But if I share a drawing and think, okay, I'm gonna do the next drawing tomorrow, let's just see how people like the first one and no one cares. Yeah, that sucks. So I guess I guess there's a tip in there that um if you want to do a big project, you should finish the project before you start sharing it with people. Because as soon as you start sharing it with people and they don't care then you're going to not care either um whereas if you finished it you finished the whole thing and then no one cared at least you finished it you know which is better than starting something and not finishing it i guess mm, sometimes it's a good thing to just not finish something sometimes you need to cut your losses you know anyway let's not end this on a downer I don't know how much longer this video is but like let's just let's go back up to happy thoughts um yeah so these little this part of this com this artwork really took a long time this is a lot of different colors but like i loved how this drawing came out it's so colorful um it's if you zoom in there's a lot of detail there's a lot of light sources um i love doing this kind of art it really just makes me so happy to make something that's like intricate and detailed and exciting to look at um and yeah I, I hope i can do more illustrations soon um and hopefully okay let me know if you like this sort of um this video if you did i would love to make more videos like this i was thinking i can start recording the process of me doing my comic pages and then chat about that process sometimes I can do Q and A's um, but yeah we're, we're getting to the end of this drawing now um, I hope you enjoyed this let me know how you felt about it I guess I guess this is close to the end <laughs> uh, if this is my first piece of art that you've ever seen from me if this is the first time you have come across me on the internet I have a webcomic called Until Sunset. The link is in the description. If you want to see more of my art, you can see it on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. And thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Goodbye.